today because we have been in 21 days of intentional and purposeful prayer over the United States of America. And so what we have decided to do is to ensure that every opportunity we can, we're going to use it to encourage others and mobilize others to pray as well. So here we are um, to pray today. And I thank God for this vision and I thank God for this this trust, I, and I realize that I am not the only one. That is what excites me. Before I started eight days ago, many others have been praying, some five days a week, some once a week, but there's been gatherings all over the country God and even across the nations of the earth. Many are saying, God, we will not leave things up for grabs, but we will do what your word says in Habakkuk, two and one i will climb up to the my watchtower and, and i will stand at my god post there i will the wait to see the what the lord has to say hallelujah i will take seriously the, the charge in ezekiel 3 and 17. The son of man i have appointed you as a watchman for israel whenever you receive a message from me fall. warn people warriors, mobilize the body of Christ to pray purposefully. Because yes, God we've been praying. And yes, America. we've been fasting. But I believe as we come up to the elections on November the 3rd, in love, it's every person laying aside their no beside to pray purposefully God and more intentionally. Beloved, I am glad you're here. And I'm glad you have allowed yourself to be listening by God's Spirit to say, From yes, I am one of those who will pray more the pray over the next several days. So we are day number eight, and here we are praying together. Today, I am pleased to have with me my dear sister and friend I've known for many years here in the city of Kissimmee. America. We have done a number of things along with her church, our, our ministries, uh, where she comes from, where Apostle Nebi and Dee, his wife, are the senior leaders. So welcome to today's broadcast, um, Prophet Pam Wood. Good to have you here, my sister. Uh, thank you, Apostle uh, Downtime. And it's a, it's a pleasure to be here because we are in such a critical moment for this nation. And we do need to hear the sound of the alarm that we need to come together in unity, praying for our nation because our words have power. Amen. Our prayers have power. And if we come together and we pray the will of God, we can see this nation turn around 
for Jesus. Amen. 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 I truly believe that, Father God. I truly believe that the destiny of America lies not in who enters the White House or who is in the White House, but it's in the hands of the children of God. After all, God says, the highest heavens belong to me and the earth I've given to man. We are stewards of this earth. We are managers of this earth, Ram. And the body of Christ, when we stand in Christ's head and represent him as his legal representatives in the earth, Ram, I believe whatever we disallow, we will be disallowed. And whatever we allow, we will be allowed. So hey, wake up. If you thought the answer lies in the politicians, I am telling you, you are a believer, you're a child of God, then we have an assignment to pray and enforce heaven's God will. That's what prayer is. Me. God has already established his will. God has already determined his order. And what we do in prayer is to enforce what heaven's will is. It's like the police. Any of us know, we'll take a little chance if we don't see the police somewhere. Is driving the light you, from you know, they're five miles over the limit, right? From um, the mountain, I, I drive sensibly and I drive the the all in the order as I should. But the only time that I'm like, oh my goodness, and then I get up and all of a sudden I check myself. Because all of a sudden, the, the cop is there to enforce what the state law is. They don't make the law, they enforce the law. And so we too, we come under divine governance, divine order. We don't create the laws. We don't make the laws. We enforce them through prayer. I like what Miles Monroe said, Prophet Pam. Miles Monroe says, it's us giving God legal right to operate in the earth. You see, here is the deal. When God said to Adam and Eve, take care of the earth, manage the earth in Genesis chapter one, he realize that when Adam sinned and abdicated his responsibility, God didn't say, oh my goodness, I better go down there and take over because man, you've made a mockery of this thing. You haven't done what you're supposed to do. Then I'm going to do it. He doesn't do like parents. Parents, if you said to your children or grandchildren, wash the dishes because somebody's coming over, right? Um, later and they're playing and they're, you know, they're not paying you any mind. After you realize, oh my gosh, 30 minutes and your guests are coming, you guess what we, we parents tend to do? We go wash the dishes or we sweep the floor, we tidy the living room, whatever, even though we gave the assignment to the children. God doesn't do that. God says, no, I will not take back. Legally, I can't. I've already given it to man. So guess what he did? In his redemptive grace, he sent a man in the person of Christ. He sent Jesus Christ as God, the God man. That's why he had to be as a man so that he could take the place of the first Adam. That's why he's called the second Adam. So God sent the second Adam into the earth realm to do exactly what man is supposed to do. God will not do for us what he's assigned us to do. So here we are to fulfill our assignment. You want to say anything to that, uh, Prophet? And, you know, before Jesus resurrected, he told his disciples, and we are all disciples. He said, I will give you the authority to bind and to loose. And we have that authority. The problem is, is, is too many of us are not taking that authority, and we're letting it for others to use. Where God is calling all of us, all of us, we are all disciples, and we all need to take that authority and pull down the designs of heaven for this nation. Amen. Amen. And you know, specifically today, we're, we're praying, praying for the dismantling of the threefold cord, which are fear, sickness, and violence. Ecclesiastes 4.12 says this, a rope that is woven of three strings cannot be easily broken. It's hard to break a threefold cord that is bounded together and, and braided together. And we believe, just as in the, in the positive sense, you can have unity that is ordained by God that can do great things, which is what we want to, to happen with prayer. If we knit our hearts together in prayer, it cannot be broken, right? It will not be broken. 
The same thing is true if we have an evil confederation, an evil coming together, a diabolical twisting of these three four cards. And I can tell you, sister, from we began the year, I mean, it's been sickness. I mean, how many thousands have died and are ailing? Yes, from the COVID. And then there are all other kinds of sickness. I mean, almost every day you hear of another diagnosis, whether it's somebody you know close up or somebody you know um, from a distance, but there, there are things happening all the time that makes you realize, hmm, something is up. So it's sickness, and then we've had the violence. We've had the oppression. We've had the injustice. And then add to that the political confusion and the fear and people not sure what to do and people are wringing their hands and biting their nails and panic and fear have consumed the land. Today, our assignment on this broadcast is to pull down and to rip apart and to dismantle by the grace of God this threefold court. Would you go ahead and invite a friend to the, today's broadcast? Would you go ahead and share this broadcast with somebody, somebody who is sick, somebody who's had a diagnosis, somebody who's in a hospital? Go ahead and share quickly because we want to release the anointing for healing in this broadcast today. Somebody who you know is struggling with depression and anxiety and fear. Go ahead and share this broadcast today because we're going to break that stronghold in the name of Jesus. Somebody who you know have been the victim of violence. I want you to share this broadcast because we're going to pray for God's healing grace to pour over their hearts. We are doing that for you as individuals, but we are doing that collectively over the nation of America. I want you to share this broadcast today because I believe what God is about to release, many need to hear this. Right, Prophet? Amen. Amen. And you know, you, you talk about that three uh, core strand of the enemy. You know, you hear about all that, all the fear. You know, the fear, am I going to get the virus? Am I going to lose my job? Fear, oh, is the election going to be corrupt? I mean, just all of these fears. And the one fear that is lacking is the fear of God. Wow. wow. The fear of God. If we have the fear of God, sister, and that fear of God is a holy reverence. And when we come to, to that point, we're not going to fear sickness because we know that God's love is going to overcome that sickness. Wow. We're not going to have the violence because we have the fear of God in us, and we're going to do what God wants us to do. So if, if people would let go of the fears of this world and grab hold of the fear of God, this nation would turn around in a dramatic way. Sis, why don't you pray into that right now? My God, pray, pray that, that the fear of God will consume us. Go ahead. Amen. Amen. Well, Father, right now we ask forgiveness, Lord, because we have feared everything else except you, Lord. Father, we have feared the things of this world. We have feared, Lord, the virus. We have feared losing our job. We have feared man, Lord. And Father, we ask forgiveness, Father. We ask, Lord God, Father, and we review that, that fear of, of the world, Lord, and we ask, Lord God, Father, may the fear of you permeate our nation. Father, may the fear of you break every stronghold over this nation, Lord. Father, may the fear of you cause us to run to the feet of Jesus. Father, may the fear of you be our guide, be our light to everything we say, everything we do. Lord, fill us with your attribute of the fear of God, Lord. Father, we ask it in the precious name of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I want to read a passage from Psalm 68, verse 1 to 5. Rise up, O God, and scatter your enemies. Let those who hate God run for their lives. Blow them away like smoke. Melt them like wax in a fire. Let the wicked perish in the presence of God, but let the godly rejoice. Let them be glad in God's presence. Let them be filled with joy. Sing praises to God and to his name. Sing loud praises to him who rides the clouds. His name is the Lord. Rejoice in his presence 
father to the fatherless, defender of widows. This is God whose dwelling is holy. So Lord, today we say you are rising up. You have arisen, hallelujah. The cries of your people have caused you to take a standing position, hallelujah. And God, even with a blow from your nostrils, you will scatter the enemies. Lord, even with a fire from your nostrils, you would cause the enemies to melt like wax. Today, God, we declare that your fire is going against the threefold cord of fear, of sickness, and of uh, violence. We thank you that your word says you have not given us a spirit of fear and that God, no weapon that is formed against us will prosper. So we find ourselves today running to you, the hiding place. Psalm 91, we will come to your abiding presence. We will come to your resting place. We will come to the place of safety, the place of security. Somebody right now, wherever you are in your home, say, I make the decision to worship. I make the choice, the choice to run into the safe arms of my master, to run into the safe arms of my king. Hallelujah. There is no safe place. There is no hiding place except in the presence of the Lord. Lord, so we worship you because you ride upon our worship, because you dwell in our worship. We choose to let worship be released in our homes. We choose to let worship be released on the streets of our cities. We choose to let worship be released over this nation. God, we will bless America. We will not curse America. For God, you love this land. Psalm 46, 5 and 7, God dwells in that city. It cannot be destroyed. From the very break of day, God will protect it. The nations are in chaos and their kingdoms crumble. God's voice thunders and the earth melts. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. Hallelujah. We declare that God is for us and he's not against us. And so, Lord, we welcome your presence. We say right in. Right into every street, right into every city, right into every county, right in King Jesus to every state. We welcome you over these 52 states of United States of America. Oh, may you hover over the United States of America. May the wind of your spirit blow away the dross, blow away, oh God, that which is ungodly. Blow away that which is evil. Blow, blow it away, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we know that many have suffered over this last couple of months from the COVID-19. Many have even lost loved ones. Many have buried multiple family members. And God, their souls have been left bereft, grieving, hurting, in anguish. And today, God, we ask that you, the comforter, would be close like you said you will be. Psalm 34 and 18, you said you are close to those who are broken in spirit and broken in heart. Would you move into the neighborhood? Would you move close to those who are in anguish today because sickness has stolen from them, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord, today that the spirit of COVID will be arrested by you. We speak today to this stronghold to be broken by the spirit of the living God. We declare that the blood of Jesus is greater. We declare that the life and the breath of God is blowing into somebody's lungs today who is struggling, who is on a ventilator, who is panting for breath. We say, wind of God, blow. Breath of God, blow and heal. Raise up a people, God, to sing your praises, to declare that God has touched me and has healed me. We drive the spirit of a sickness. We drive this virus and every other sickness, oh God, from this land. We pray, God, as we repent and as we turn to you, that you would do like you said. I will forgive your sins and I will heal your land. We ask for forgiveness and we ask for healing of our land today in the name of Jesus.
Turn up your volume, sis. Turn up your volume. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. No, no. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, we, we believe that the trauma that COVID-19 has inflicted on the souls of many have caused many to be depressed, to be anxious, to be fearful, oh God, to, to panic, Lord. Many are suffering from panic attacks. If you're watching this broadcast today and you're one of those struggling with panic attacks, if you're watching this broadcast today and you're one of those struggling with anxiety and fear and, and despair, we want to speak to that right now in the name of Jesus. We want to let you know that God has not given you a spirit of fear but he's given you a spirit of power, of love, and a sound mind. Put your hand on your head and say, I have a sound mind. I have a sound mind. I have the mind of Christ. I have the mind of Christ. You got to make a decision right now. I will not allow myself to be overtaken and to be consumed by fear because God is in control. Fear is when you feel like you've lost control, that you're losing control, and you don't know what to do. Then God says, why don't you turn every anxiety over to me? Cast every fear, every anxiety to him, because he cares for you. He says, watch the sparrow, watch the birds. I care for them. They don't worry about how they're going to be cared for. Look at the lilies of the field. They don't clothe themselves. I clothe them in various colors, kaleidoscope, oh my goodness, of colors. God cares for the smallest detail of your life. Open your mouth and say, he cares for me. He cares for my family. 
He cares whether your heart is breaking right now. He cares whether or not you, your, your job is, is, is uncertain right now. He cares whether you can pay the bills right now. He cares whether your food, you have enough food in the pantry right now. He cares. And so we turn every care, everything that is out of man's control is not impossible for God to turn around, for God to shift the tides. And so we call on Jehovah God, the God who will provide, the God who sees, the God who knows, the God who operates in the affairs of man. He has not left us. We are not abandoned. We are not forsaken. We are not orphans. Even now, God is putting his arms around you. I feel the need to pray for someone whose heart is breaking, Lord Jesus. I say to you right now, beloved, the voice version, the voice version of Psalm 34 and 18 says, when someone is hurting, the eternal moves in close and comforts him in his pain. Sometimes we want God to deliver us immediately, but God wants to sit with you right where you are today. Invite him, say, Lord, sit with me right where I am. Sit with me in this place of uncertainty, in this place of grief, in this place of sadness, in this place of brokenness, in this place of bereavement, in this place of hurt and pain, Lord, and disappointment. Lord, I welcome you, your presence to consume me. I declare your presence, oh God, consuming your people now. And Lord, we release an angel of healing, an angel of peace, angels of peace, yes, move into that hospital room, move into that hospice room, move into that nursing home, move into that bedroom, move into that office, move into that space, oh God, where someone is lifting his hand or her hands and saying, God, I surrender. I can't do this without your help. And so we receive help from on high in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 33, 3 says to call upon me. The Lord says, call upon me and I will answer you and show you many great things that you don't even know yet. So I want you today, make that call, that 911 call to God. Make that 911 call and say, Heavenly Father, here I am. I need you at this time. I don't have the answer. You don't have the answer to your problem. You don't have the answer to your situation. God does. But the problem is, is we don't call upon him. We call upon our friends. We call upon the, ch uh, uh, the church. We call upon the doctors. But we don't call upon God himself. God is calling us in this season to call on him. He is the God of healing. He is the God of righteousness. He is the God of, of your uh, deliverance. Call upon him today and he will set you free. He will heal you. He will save your children. Call upon him today. Make that 911 call. Get in the intimacy of the Lord. You know, coronavirus has us, has us uh, uh, in social distancing. Well, we don't want to social distance ourselves from God. So call on him today. He is your answer, and he will show you things that you don't know yet. You know, everybody's searching for a cure for this coronavirus. God has the cure. God has the solution. We just need to call upon him today. Amen. So, Father, I ask, Lord God, Father, may we make that 911 call, Lord. Father, that emergency call, Lord. Father, thank you that your mind is open 24-7. Father, that you are here there ready to hear our prayers day and night lord and father we just call upon you lord father show us those things that we are searching for lord father things that we don't have answers to father we bind every spirit of confusion lord father we bind lord the spirit of confusion out of our minds father just as, as apostle uh, valentine had preached or had uh, uh praised lord god give us sound minds lord Father, we ask, Lord God, that when we call upon you, that you will hear our prayers, Lord. Father, you will hear our petitions. 
And Lord, as we call upon you, Lord, Father, you will release your peace, Lord. Father, as we set our minds focused on you, Lord, that your shalom will come over our lives, Lord. Father, I speak that shalom over the people. Lord, those that are in desperate situations, Father, those that are depressed, Father, those that are oppressed, Lord, Father, we speak your shalom over them, Lord. Father, may the shalom of God fill their homes. May the shalom of God fill that hospital room. Father, may the shalom of God fill this nation, Lord. Father, every area where violence tries to rise up, Lord, Father, we speak your shalom, Lord. Father, may your peace be in the midst of every situation, Lord God. Father, that we can know that we know that we have been in your presence, Lord. Father, to you the praise, to you the glory, in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Malachi chapter 4 and verse 2. But for you who revere my name, the son of righteousness will rise with healing in its rays, and you will go out and frolic like well-fed calves. Lord Jesus, we declare that the S-O-N, hallelujah, that Jesus Christ, Christos, the anointed one, Lord, you said in your word that we will grow fat with the anointing and it will destroy every yoke, hallelujah. It will break every yoke. We say even now as the sun is right, has risen over us, that we are becoming fatter in the spirit with the anointing of God. And Lord, every demonic cord is being broken because we are deepening our relationship with you. We are growing in intimacy with you and the presence of God will shatter and destroy every stronghold. Spirit of the living God, we declare right now that those of us who have positioned ourselves to hear your voice are hearing with clarity and we are speaking hope and not fear. We are speaking peace and not chaos, Lord. We declare that there'll be a sure sound, mm -hmm, that there'll be a clear sound and that there'll be a sound of hope being released from the body of Christ. Father, we thank you that even as the psalmist in Psalm 73 and 26 would admit, I am broken in body and spirit, but I am broken in body and spirit, but God is my strength and he will be mine forever. Father, we receive supernatural strength, hallelujah where there's been feebleness and weakness and disability because, oh God, of fear, because of violence, because of injustice, where we are staggering like drunken men. We ask for sobriety to come to our hearts and to our minds, that there will be stability to our emotions right now. God, you regulate our emotions. Lord, you regulate our emotions. God, you, you check, Lord God, our entire system and cause wellness and wholeness to come to us. I want to right now in this very moment, Sometimes we do this at the end of a broadcast or the end of a service. But right now I feel prompted to declare over you, over us, the ironic blessing, the priestly blessing in Numbers chapter 6. Because God said, Moses, tell Aaron and his sons to pray this prayer over Israel. And every time they would pray this prayer, they are putting my name on the people. Oh God, every time someone blesses you with this prayer, the name of almighty God is being put upon you. I don't know where you need him today, Lord Jesus. I don't know if you need him as the provider, then we will place Jehovah Jireh on you. I don't know if you need him to war on your behalf. If you feel the pressure of, of, of demonic forces coming up against you, well, we declare El Gibor over you. I don't know if you feel today that there is chaos and confusion and you need the peace of God. Then we are speaking Jehovah. Help me with this one. What's peace again, Lord? Um, shalom over you. 
If you need covering and protection, he's Jehovah Nissi, Lord God Almighty. All that he is, is being placed and pressed into you today. So sickness must go. Fear must go. Anxiety must go. Bereavement and sadness that has taken over must go. I say the Lord bless you. Mm -hmm. He barracks you. He bows God, bows before you. That's what Barak means. And he's loaded with blessings and he bears blessings and he brings them to you, beloved, today. The Lord bless you. Hallelujah. And the Lord keep you. Say, I will be kept by God. I will be preserved in the midst of this crisis. I will be preserved in my mind, in my body, in my soul, in my spirit, in my marriage, in my family life, in ministry, in my job, I will be preserved. COVID, you will not touch me and you will not take me out prematurely. The Lord bless me and the Lord bless you and keep you and cause this, his face to shine upon you. Guess what? If you know anything about somebody's facial expression, They don't have to say a word. They just have to look at you. And if there's a smile, you know they have a delight in you. There's a joy about seeing you. If there's a frown, whoa, you could tell they might be angry at you or they're disgusted, right? And so a facial expression, a countenance speaks. Woo! And God says, I will turn my countenance towards you. I will turn my face towards you. Look at me, says the Lord. I know you've been putting your gaze everywhere else. But if you gaze at me, I will show you that in my face is everything you need. The delight and the pleasure is in my face. Come, come away, my child. Come into my presence. Run into my presence for I will turn my face towards you. My countenance will be upon you and I will grant you my peace, my shalom. Nothing is missing and nothing broken, nothing distorted, nothing. I declare wholeness of well-being to you today. Wholeness of well-being upon you today in Jesus' mighty name. Now the word of God tells us that the joy of the Lord is our strength. So I I just want to release joy over each person that is watching this uh, broadcast. I speak joy over your life. I declare a spirit of praise and worship to come over you, that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. The word of God tells us that God is my strength and my refuge. So I pray that as you are worshiping in your house today, as you are are coming into the presence of the Lord, that he's going to give you that supernatural strength that you need and the joy that you need to overcome that situation. So, Father, we are declaring, Lord, the joy of the Lord over your people today. May the joy of the Lord, Lord, lift them up above their situation, Father. Lord, help them to look at you, Lord God. Help them to keep their eyes focused on you and not on their situation. We give too much credit to the enemy, but today we choose to give credit to our Lord and Savior. Lord, we speak blessings over your people, the blessings of the fruit of your spirit. Father, goodness, meekness, love, patience, joy, Lord God. Father, we speak these over your uh, people, Lord understanding father and as we come to you lord god father we are declaring that the enemy is defeated the enemy is under our feet that he will not prosper every weapon fashioned against you will not prevail but the joy of the lord will prevail in your life in jesus mighty name i feel a connection right now um prophet pam with what you just decreed and just just spoke spoke. there are many of you physically have been feeling fatigued, exhausted, and tired, and nothing you do seems to be remedying the situation. Well, the Lord says an infusion of divine joy is going to cause you to feel better. 
and uh, come on, a baptism even, an immersion in joy is going to cause your bones to come alive. My God, your joints. Oh, Jesus, right now, right now, I speak the joy of the Lord. Maybe you just need to begin to laugh. Maybe you just need to begin to jump up and down. Maybe you just need to run around in your room. Maybe you just need to clap your hands and shout for the joy of the Lord is your strength. I declare the joy will push uh, depression out of your body. I declare that joy will release ooh, healing to your bones. My God, where your joints have been stiff and achy. I say joy, joy, joy. Receive the mighty streams of joy, the mighty rivers of joy flowing through your being, through your blood streams, through your blood vessels now in the name of Jesus. Come on, from your head to your toe, the joy of the Lord. I'm receiving a baptism of joy right Right now in the name of Jesus. Woo, I felt that prophet Pam. Woo, joy, 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 joy. We speak it now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thanks, God. Woo. Amen. Thank you, Lord. My friends, I want you to know that we are continuing for the next 13 days. We have 13 days left in our prayer schedule. Each day we post on the page the prayer focus for the day. Sometimes it's, it's there the night before. Check in and follow with us. I am so glad many are saying we are following and tracking with the prayer guide. Continue in your prayer groups. Continue in your house churches. Continue in your families. Continue in your churches. Continue to walk your streets and drive your streets and pray as you do so. Go into the grocery store and pray. Go to the polls and pray. Pray, pray, pray so that we, not, we do not become praise, P-R-E-Y-S, right? Pray all the time, all kinds of prayers in all kinds of ways. On this Friday, Kingdom Life Center will host a prayer time over Zoom. We invite you to join us. We will post um, the code and the password for the Zoom link on our pages, Kingdom Life Center and, and San Giovanni Ministries. We invite you, invite other people. If you have nothing happening on a Friday night, fr this Friday night, on Zoom, we will pray together at 7 p.m. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And then we have a couple of announcements. We want you to just hang around for a little bit and receive those announcements. But we are so glad to, that you join us. Prophet Pam, thank you. Thank you for coming and thank you for being with me today and being with us today. Thank you for lending your voice to what God is releasing over the land. God bless you. Thank you. God bless each of you. Stay tuned for these announcements. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. America, my home, sweet home. God bless America. Prairies to the ocean. 